Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, showing rare courage in the face of disaster. In the air. On horseback. Or in a screaming squad car. Ranger Bill, his mind alert, a ready smile, unswerving, loyal to his mission. And all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Boy, Naughty Pine's getting more like the big city all the time. Look at that new bus terminal. Yeah, it sure is, pal. Say, is what I read true, Bill? I mean, about the population explosion? I don't know, Henry. What did you read? Well, I, I think it was in the newspaper not too long ago. I read that the Earth will be overpopulated inside of 30 years. <laughs> what do you think about that? Well, that information was probably reached by someone who knows more about those things than I do. I do know that the population is increasing all over the world. Here in our own country, you see more and more housing. Yeah, you sure do. Right here in Naughty Pine, they seem to be building all the time. Mm -hmm. Bill, what happens when they run out of places to build? Well, I wouldn't worry about that, Bill. You wouldn't? Why not? By that time, they'll have run out of places to grow food. <laughs> I never thought about that. Well, then what are we going to do? I don't know. But if what you read is true, we'll find out, won't we? Well, that's not much help. I'm sorry, Henry. But if we're in this sort of fix, I'm afraid there isn't much we can do about it. Right now, all we can do is say, as you did, that Naughty Pine is getting more like a big city all the time. Yeah. Well, I hope it doesn't get too big for a while. The bigger a city gets, the fewer people you can get to know. That's sure true. Sometimes knowing all your neighbors seems like a pain. <laughs> but when you're in trouble, it sure helps to know who to see about it. That's right. Hey, Bill! Uh, what is it, pal? Look over there, in the bus terminal. That man who got off the bus is... Yeah, that... I've been noticing him, Henry, and I think you're right. That looks like George Foster. But I thought he was, uh, he was crazy. He was institutionalized a number of years ago, Henry. That doesn't necessarily mean that he's still ill. You know, I think we ought to go over. Doesn't look as though there is anyone here to meet him. You want to walk right over to him? Sure, of course. You might be able to give him a lift home. Well, how do you know he's okay? He's here, isn't he? What if he escaped? <laughs> Henry, don't let the unknown scare you away from common sense. If he'd escaped, I'm sure he... We would have heard about it before this. The institution is quite a ways back east. There'll be lots of time to send out warnings. Well, I guess you're right. Okay. Let's go over and meet him. I really appreciate the ride, Bill That's all right, George Anything else you need, just call well, I'll remember that You sure you won't come in for a cup of coffee or something? I know Peg would like to see you I think she's more interested in seeing you <laughs> I guess you're right <laughs> She was pretty upset that the car was out of commission and she couldn't meet me. Oh, we'll stop back soon, after you've had a chance to get reoriented. Uh, seven years is a long time, isn't it? Sure is. Well, I'd better go in. Thanks again, Bill. I mean it. Don't give it a thought, George. Now, George! Yes, Bill? Welcome back. Thanks, Bill. Yes, Bill? I feel like a chump. Oh? Yeah. I guess I acted pretty stupid about Mr. Foster. Stupidly, Henry. And yes, you did. But don't let it get you down. Mental illness is one of the least understood and most misrepresented problems we have these days. He seems fine. He is fine, Henry. 
In George's case, it was just like any long-term illness. He was finally cured. It's hard to believe that he was once a dangerous man. It's also hard to believe how big the story about him has been blown in seven years. George Foster was no maniac. From what I heard... I... You've heard mostly rumor, pal. For some reason, people like to chatter about the kind of situation George found himself in. And not satisfied with the sensationalism of it, they blow it up to silly proportions. Well, what really did happen, Bill? He used to be a ranger, didn't he? That's right. He was posted to Tower 13. Oh, boy. If you were superstitious, you could really make something out of that. I guess you could. Anyhow, you know how remote Tower 13 is from the rest of the world. Well, George, Peg, his wife, Sharon, and Tim, their two children... Oh, I know Sharon. She's in school with me. Well, I didn't know she had a brother. She doesn't. But you said... She, she doesn't now. Oh... Little Tim, while playing in the tower one day, fell, oh, no. was killed. The doctors seemed to think that it was that, plus the isolation of the place. He must have brooded constantly about Tim's death. It finally pushed him off the deep end. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. How did Mrs. Foster and Sharon take it? Tim's death, I mean. Well, Sharon was only seven at the time. and She didn't fully realize what had happened. Peg was... Very broken up, of course. But with the Lord's help, managed to keep things going. Ah, she's a wonderful woman. She must be. Well, what did he do when he um, snapped? I mentioned that he brooded a great deal. In fact, all the time. It's hard to tell what he was thinking. He would sit for hours not saying a word. Wow. That must have been hard on his family. Finally, it was obvious that he needed psychiatric help. And... Uh, we did what we could. But didn't he attack somebody or something? That part of the story has been pretty well warped, pal. The night they came to take him away, well, he didn't care much for the idea, you know. I guess not. Well, then all he was trying to do was protect himself. That's right. Kind of strange, too, when you think he was trying to protect himself from being helped. Yeah. I guess I had him all wrong. Henry, I hope others who have him all wrong will be so easily convinced. What do you mean? Well, put yourself in his place. How would you like to return to a town the size of Naughty Pine, where you become a legend, and try to pick up life again? <laughs> This math, it really gets me down. Who says there's only one right answer to the problems? <laughs> well, cheer up, Einstein. I didn't do very well in the test either. Well, you don't sound very broken up about it. There are more important things. Hey, that's right. Your father's home. Yeah. Bill and I drove him from the station yesterday. I know you did. Daddy mentioned it. He said that you and Bill gave him a real warm reception. Thanks a lot, Henry. Oh, I didn't have anything to do with it. It was all Bill's idea. Well, it was pretty sweet of you both anyway. It must be nice to have your father home again, huh, Sharon? Oh, boy, I'll say. This afternoon, right after school, we're going to tour the city. <laughs> Naughty Pine? <laughs> well, yes, it's grown a lot in seven years, you know. Daddy says I have, too. <laughs> I guess so. Well, I'm sure glad that you... Hey, uh, Henry, you don't care who you talk to, do you? Huh? Uh... Yeah, I'm, I'm talking to you, Ranger Boy. I says, you don't care what company you keep, do you? Don't you know Sharon, the old, old man here's a loony? <laughs> you'd better go, Sharon. Oh, Henry, please don't pay any attention to I him. I think you'd better go, Sharon. Your, your father's probably waiting for you. Yeah. yeah. Ladybug, ladybug, fly away home. To the bug house. <laughs> <laughs> go on now, Sharon. I don't think you ought to be around here right now. Well, okay, Henry, but please don't do anything that would get you in trouble. You, uh, you want to talk to me about something, Mr. Henry Scott? Sometimes, Sil, you show yourself to be even more stupid than I eh? give you credit for. 
You got anything else to say before I flatten your wise guy? Muscles still replacing brains, Phil? Still not intelligent enough to use words? I use the universal method of communications, buddy. See how you like the sound of this? Ow! Did I speak loud enough for you, Mr. Scott? At City Hall, huh? Yeah, that's right, Bill. They were glad to be able to help George out. Said they needed a good janitor ever since Sven passed away earlier this year. Well, that's good to hear, Cal. I think it's a good sign when the town shows that kind of consideration to a man like George. Oh, uh, I think reaction against people with mental problems is pretty well outdated now, Well, Bill. we all grow up sooner or later. At least I hope we do. Naughty Pine seems to be. I think after the initial stir over George's arrival home, the whole episode will be passed and forgotten. Sure. He'll just be the new janitor over at City Hall. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, hi, pal. Hello, Henry. Hello. I'm going in the back. Hey, just a minute, pal. Anything wrong? No. Something in your eye? It's okay, Bill. Let's uh, see your eye, Henry. That's nothing much. Want to talk about it? Yeah, I was just running along anyhow. It's all right, Cal. Bill, I, I just don't want to talk about it. Why don't you stretch out on the cot to back there, huh? Okay. Oh, Henry. Yeah? Uh, put a cold, wet washcloth on that eye. It'll help it. Sure. Thanks. Does that happen very often? Very rarely, Cal. Henry isn't the kind of fella to go around picking fights. Uh, Well, we could use a few more like him. Well, I wasn't kidding about running along. It's going to be a pleasure to go back to my office now that George Foster's working there. I might even be able to see what color the top of my desk is. (laughs) As I said, I'm glad to hear about the way the town is helping George to make the adjustment. I don't think it'll be any time at all before his past is swallowed up and forgotten. Hello? Hello? Hmm, must be something wrong with his phone. Hi, Peg. The working man has come home. Working man? Oh, George, did you get a job? <laughs> yep, I did. First try. How's about a big kiss for the new custodian of the City Hall of Naughty Pine? Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad for you. Uh, Bill suggested I take that janitor's job until he receives orders from Washington about that other position. Oh, that's wonderful. George, I'm so happy I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, might I... Um... Make a suggestion? What? Hang up the phone. The phone? Oh, oh, George, I forgot all about it. You you know, it's little actions like that that uh, make people suspect things. George, you you know, you shouldn't kid about things like that. Who has a better right, I'd like to know? (laughs) Well, I think it's wonderful that you have the job. I kind of anticipated it. Cooked something a little special for dinner. Mmm, great. Oh, that you, Sharon? Hello. Oh, you're just in time for supper. Better wash up. I'm not very hungry tonight, Dad. I I think I'll just go upstairs. Huh. What do you suppose that's all about? I don't know. <laughs> oh, now I think I know. Sharon and I were going to take a walk around town this afternoon after school. I got so excited about the job that it completely slipped my mind. Oh, that's a shame, George. Maybe you'd better run upstairs and... I'll get it. Hello? Why, you dirty... Oh, I meant to tell you about that. What? The phone. It's been ringing all day, and every time I answer, there's no one there. Oh, there's probably something wrong in the wire. There's something wrong, all right, but it isn't in the wire. What are you talking about? It wasn't dead on the other end this time. Well, who was it? Just a voice. A voice telling me that Naughty Pine was not a haven for loonies and to get back into my padded cell. Well? Well, what? What are you going to do? Go back? Peg! 
I'll admit this is an awful stunt, George. It sounds like immature minds at work. Probably some of the kids in town. But are you going to let it get to you? Well, it's not exactly a friendly gesture. Mm, that's right, it certainly isn't. But are you going to let it overthrow all the warmth this town has already shown you? Bill, the people down at City Hall. Oh, you're right, dear. I'm sorry. I just lost my temper for a minute. You know what a temper I have. Don't worry. They'll get tired of trying to antagonize you sooner if they see that it doesn't work. Now, now, listen, you guys. This bug ain't taking the hit. He ain't even thinking about leaving. And it's our jobs as citizens of this here bug to see that this problem's taken care of. Right? Yes, no, it's, uh, yes, all uh, right. Like you say, it's uh, it's our duty. Now, what do you want to bet our parents will thank us after it's all over? Sure, yeah, sure. Right. Hey, well, tell me, sir, what's the plan? Well, I ain't sure. He needs a big push, a lot of convincing. But I ain't sure what. Hey. Yeah, like what's up, man? Our plan's forming. Look who just walked in here. Yeah. Where? Over there, stupid. Look, the bug's daughter, Sharon. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, look, here's what we'll do. Let's take her for a ride in the car out to the country. Uh -huh. Drop her off and make a walk all the way back home. Yeah. <laughs> then maybe the bug will get the idea and take a long walk himself. Right. <laughs> That's all there was to it, Bill. I'm sorry you had to become involved, Henry. I'm glad you stood your ground. Fellas like this, Sylvester, are the kind that just don't seem to care who they hurt. They seem to think that Mr. Foster is some kind of threat to Naughty Pine. I'm sure that that's just a dodge, pal. When kids go out looking for excitement, they'll blame anything handy to make what they're doing seem all right. Well, I hope they cut it out pretty soon. They should have... Seen how sad Sharon looked when the whole thing started. George's daughter? Yes, sir. I tried to get her to leave before he said anything really bad. That was very considerate of you. I guess, but, but it didn't do any good. She heard enough. Well, I hope this doesn't go any farther than this. Ah, I've got it. Ranger headquarters. Henry Scott speaking. Bill there, Henry? Well, hi, Cal. Yeah, it sure is. Well, you put him on and hurry. It's for you, Bill. It's Cal, and he sounds like something's wrong. Here, uh, I'll take it. Yes, Cal? Now listen, Bill, we haven't got a lot of time. Okay, shoot. And George Foster just called. His daughter's been taken for a ride by some of the toughs that hang out at Manager's Drug Store. Any idea where they're heading? Yeah, I do. George didn't even know about it until somebody called him and said he could find her near the woods at the north end of town. Mm. You know that area, Bill. I think we'd make better time if you came along. Well, I'll meet you. I'll be by in less than five minutes to pick you up. I'll be out in front, waiting. Wow. What was that all about? I'll tell you all about it later, pal. Keep an eye on things, will you? Cal's stopping by in a minute or two, and we'll be gone for a while. Sure, only... No time now. See you later. Glad you could come along, George. Comforted to see her father. Will it? What do you mean? You forget, Bill. It's because of me that I mean, she's wherever she is. I'll argue that point with you later, George. A cow, this next drive is the quickest way into the picnic area at the edge of the woods. Right. Hold on. Bill, I don't know if I George, can. George, easy. Let's find out what's happened before we get all worked up. Poor Sharon just just because her father is a... Is a what, George? You know. And are you? I... I don't know. Sometimes I feel... Bill, look ahead in the lights there. Stop the car, Cal. Uh -huh. Leave the lights on. Right, let's go. Sharon, Sharon, honey, it's your dad. Daddy, daddy. I'm 
It's all right, honey. It's all right now. <laughs> Help her back to the car, George. Come on, honey. We'll have you home in no time. Ah, oh, look at this, Cal. Uh -huh, what's this? A note. Why don't you take a long walk, too? Hmm, very funny. Uh, here comes George now. How is she, George? The doc says that all she suffered was a chill. She's resting now. Oh, that's good to hear. I'll see. Bill, what am I going to do? Sure, everything about tonight will turn out okay. But what about all the other nights? How can I leave home without being afraid that either Peg or Sharon won't be there when I get back? I know you've had a bad time of it, George. We all sympathize with you very much. But you can't give up now. We know from what Henry and Sharon have told us that this is strictly kid stuff. The town as a whole accepts you. And it's all for you. Well, then why don't you do something about this? Well, one reason is because before tonight we had nothing to charge anyone with. It was just your word against theirs. And the word of a crazy man doesn't stand up in court, huh? Now, George, that's got nothing to do with it. Now, tonight, somebody actually committed a crime. Until tonight, you know, you'd probably call what went on just uh, pranks, don't you see? George, what did the doctors at the hospital you were in... Tell you about coming back into society as a whole. Well, they said it wouldn't be easy. They even said that I could expect some mistreatment. Well? But when I got here and everyone was so friendly and fair, I... I guess I dropped my guard. I don't know if you should call it a guard. Well, you know what I mean. Stick with it, George. If you give in, either in anger or defeat... You've lost the battle for the rest of your life. At a time like this, you can see the practicality of Christ's words. Turn the other cheek. I don't get it. I just don't get it. This guy's either got more guts than anyone I've ever known, or he's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's right, he's crazy. crazy. Yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> uh, listen, yeah. well, well, anyway, guys, we just gotta push a little harder. All right. Have you, have you got a plan, Sil? Yeah, I, I figure if we can get him fired from his janitor's job at City uh, Hall, well, maybe then he'll give up. Ah, uh, sure he will. Uh, how you gonna do it? Hey, listen, I've been watching him over there. Looks like he waxes floors over there about three every afternoon. Uh-huh. Now, every day he does a different floor. But it won't be so hard to find... Hey, Mr. Foster! Yes? You want it on the phone downstairs. Oh, thanks. Did someone ever call for me down here? Not that I know of, Mr. Foster. You sure? Well, it didn't come through this switchboard. Maybe the payphone, but I don't remember hearing it ring. <sighs> That's odd. Thanks. Oh, fire! The second floor is on fire! What? Oh, what could have... Someone get an extinguisher. The wax on the second floor is ablaze. Here. I'm not sure, sir. It looks like the wax George Foster was using uh, to wax this floor here caught fire. Bill, do you think someone... I'm not sure, Henry. Uh, where is George now? I don't know, sir. He, he went running this down the stairs out of here. It was looking kind of funny when this, when this fire started. Yeah? You don't think he did it, do you? No, I don't. Uh, come on, pal. We've got to find George Foster. If he wasn't at home, where do you think he is? I'm not sure, pal. When a man has pushed as hard as George has been, it's hard to tell what he'll do. Hey, Bill, look. 
Huh? Isn't that his car? Where? Over there, the entrance to the cemetery. Yeah, looks like it. I wonder what he's doing in there. Only one way to find out, Henry. Let's go. There he is. Over there. Uh huh. That's what I thought. Who. Well, who's over there? That's the grave of his son, Tim. Oh. What do you think we ought to do? Let's go over. Quietly. Oh. Oh. Hello, Bill. Henry. Hello, George. Hi. I. I suppose you heard about this afternoon. Yes, we did. Another stunt. Yeah. I was pretty stormy about it, Bill. I thought you would be. I... I considered a lot of things. You don't seem angry now, Mr. Foster. I'm not, Henry. In a short time, I've done a lot of thinking. Want to talk about it? I'm sane, Bill. I don't have to defend that or prove it. Even to yourself? You know me pretty well, don't you? No, not even to myself. All these things that have been happening have not been my fault. We know that. But George is just finding that out, pal. Oh, I don't get it. You will, someday. Uh, George, what do you say we go back to the car? All right, Bill. Hey, hey, it sounds like someone's trying to get you on the car radio, Bill. I hear it, pal. Uh, you want to run and get it? Sure. He's a nice boy. Henry? Yeah. It's too easy to forget the nice fellows when the others are acting up. Hey, mm. Bill, that was Cal. He, he said the kids who took Sharon the other night and set that fire today were brought in by their parents. Huh? Yeah, they were really mad when they found out what was going on. They wanted to know if Mr. Foster would like to meet them one at a time. They must be angry. That's the first time I've ever heard of anything like that. I don't want to meet them at all. You know, the thing about violence is that it snowballs. Someone has to end it. And I guess that someone is me. Well, that's a very healthy attitude, George. The police will give those kids something to think about. And I think Naughty Pine will settle down now to live and let you live. Well, I don't think I have to say much more, boys and girls. George Foster is still making a worthwhile contribution to Naughty Pine. And... Uh, Maybe we all grew up a little because of his experience. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill was produced in the radio studios of the Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. <laughs>